Hello there, everybody. Uh, my name is Carl Zipper. I run the Backwoods Engineering Programs at Mount Alamucci Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey. I'm here to talk to you today about one of my favorite things, and that is working with rope and wooden spars to make lashings. Uh, the lashing I'm going to talk with you about right now is the tripod lashing. As its name suggests, you use it to make a tripod, a three-legged pyramid. Um, there's a couple different ways out there, depending on um, you know what scout handbook you have or what other books you've looked at to tie the tripod lashing. I'm going to show you my favorite way, and then I'm going to show you a second way um, that's handy if you have to make a very, very large tripod. But the way I'm going to show you right now works for um, you know probably 95% of what you would ever want to do. So to start off, um, we need three spars about the same length. Um, these are eight feet. Um, I lay them on the ground so that all three butt ends, those are the fat ends of the spars, are all lined up with each other. I don't want to leave one long or one short relative to the others because then I would be in the unfortunate situation of having a crooked tripod when I was all done. Um, if there is any difference in length, you know, better to have it at the top. Um, I have a rope here. This is a 20 foot rope. And um, for a tripod this size, 20 foot is about right. It's a quarter inch in diameter made of manila fiber because that's what I like. Um, if I was building a much larger tripod I might use something 30 feet long. If I was building a smaller tripod I could probably get away with a 15 footer or so. Um, to start the tripod lashing I start by selecting one of these spars, doesn't matter which one, and I make a clove hitch around it one end of my rope. Um, the clove hitch you may recall is for tying off a rope to a spar or other solid object to form it. You wrap around the spar, you come up, making an X on the top, an X. You keep wrapping around, back down underneath the spar, and then you tuck your end right up under the middle of that X. And you cinch everything up nice and tight. Um, don't shortchange yourself, you know, leave a nice four or six inch tail coming out of that knot. If you leave it too short, the knot could slip out by accident when you're working on your lashing and that's no good. All right, so now that I've made my clove hitch, um, most lashings have two parts, wrapping turns that wrap around the spars to hold them together, and then frapping turns that pull those wrapping turns tight. So we're gonna start out with some wrapping turns for this tripod lash. The wrapping turns are pretty easy. What you do, you're going in like a figure eight pattern, over, under, over, under. And you see what I did here that I see a lot of people don't do when they're working on this lashing is I started at the bottom of my lashing. I'm working out towards the top of the spars. What this lets me do is save a lot of time. I can just pass the middle of the rope over the end of the spar rather than having to pull that whole long, you know, 18 or 20 feet of rope through there. Um, I'm lazy, and by that I mean I'm efficient. Um, so, I'm going to keep doing my wrapping turns. People ask me, they say, Carl, how many wrapping turns should you do for a good tripod lashing? Um, the answer is, you know, there's no right or wrong or particular number. Um, I like to do enough. And um, for a tripod lashing this size, enough is usually um, six or eight. You know, I try and just um, size it so that I run out of rope when I'm done with the lashing. You can see... I'm keeping all my wrapping turns nice and tight. I'm keeping them neatly organized and close to each other. Um, you don't want to have any big gaps in between your wrapping turns because that is a golden opportunity for this lashing to get loose once you um, start working with it. Bear with me here as I throw a few more of these wrapping turns in. You can see, you know, all the time I'm saving by not having to pull the end of the rope through here. That's about right. And let's see, how many did I get in here? One, two, three, four. And look at that, exactly six. Okay, so that's my wrapping turns. I did the clove hitch. I did my six wrapping turns in a figure eight pattern. Um, I kept them nice and tight and nice and neat. Um, that'll make the next step easier. The next step is frappings. Uh, the frappings go around the wrapping turns, not around the spar, but around the wrapping turns, and they pull it tight. So here we go. I'm putting my first one in. 
going right in here. And this is um, this is where pulling really hard and really tight can only help you. So that's one frapping turn. Um, the question is now, how many of these do I make in a lashing? I usually make two frapping turns. Um, you can do more, but you know, the more doesn't get you anything; it just gets you more work. That's two. Now, since this is a tripod lashing, there's a second location where I also have to frap. So I'm going to put two more in here. That's one. And that is number two. All right. So now the lashing is done, but I still have to tie off the end here. You know, obviously I don't want to leave this loose for obvious reasons. So to tie off the lashing, um, you tie another clove hitch around one of the spars. Um, again, it doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to work around this one just because that's convenient for me. Um, I tie the clove hitch at the end of the lashing differently from how I tied it at the beginning. Um, a lot of people... When they form lashings, they, um, they tie the clove hitch at the end the same way that I showed you at the beginning. They wrap around, they make the X, they tuck under. And um, that'll give you a good clove hitch. But the problem is it's very hard to make the clove hitch that way and have it be in very, very close to the lashing. Um, if your clove hitch at the end of the lashing is way out here, it can slide inward and it can introduce all sorts of looseness. And um, then your goose is cooked. So there is a better way to tie the clove hitch at the end um, and the way that you do that is by making half hitches. Um, a half hitch is a building block that you use to tie a lot of different knots, and it's very easy to make. So I'm going to make a half hitch around this spar, and I'll show you how. I start wrapping around the spar. I come up. And I come in between the spar and the rope coming out of the lash. You see that? And I can cinch this tight. And this is a half inch, not really much to it. Um, you can see the half inch I just made, it's way far away from the lashing, like I was just saying was a bad thing. But the beauty of the half inch is it's real easy to deal with that. All I gotta do is just pull it in and pull it tight and it'll slip right down in there for me. It's real easy to get in a good location. And I can cinch that back and forth, really work it in tight. Now to get a clove hitch, at the end of this lashing, all I have to do is do the exact same thing again, make another half hitch. So again, I'm going to wrap around, down under, I'm going to come up, and I'm going to come in between the spar and the rope that I'm wrapping with here. There we go. So now, I don't know if my um, videographer Richard here can, can zoom in on it, but right here, this is a clove hitch. It might be a little bit hard to see because it's so darn close to the lashing, but that's exactly what you want. Um, you don't want to have this far away. If it's far away, it's not as good as it could be. And if it's not as good as it could be, then it could be better. <laughs> so um, there's one last thing to do here. <laughs> there is um, one last thing for us to do um, before this lashing is done, and that is I have this extra rope sticking out the end. Um, the extra rope is bad for a couple reasons. Um, reason number one is it's a potential safety hazard. Um, if this is a, if you're building something that you're going to be climbing on, you know, or if the rope's going to be down close to the ground, your foot could get wrapped up in this, and you could trip, and that would be really bad. Um, reason number two is if the rope hangs down far enough out of the lashing that it touches the ground, that's not so good for the rope. When the rope gets dirty, when the rope gets wet, all of that shortens the rope's life. Um, and the third reason, and the least important of all, is that um, I'm very vainglorious. I like what I do to look good. And this does not look good with rope just hanging out here. It looks like a mess. You know, it looks like something that, um, it's like something that someone who wasn't me would make, you know. So I'm going to wrap up the extra just around here. Just wrap it around a couple times. And when I'm just about out of rope... I'm just going to tuck it under there and pull it tight. Wrapping up the extra is safer. It is better for the rope. 
And it also makes you look like a better person than you might even be. Who knows, you know? Uh, so that's how I like to do it. Uh, one thing that I would never do with my extra rope on the end of the lashing is I would never take out my pocket knife and cut it off. Because then, next time I needed a 20-foot rope, my rope would only be 18 feet long. And that would be terrible. So this tripod lashing is done. The only thing left to do is to stand it up. take it, I stand it upright, and now one by one I can spread out the legs. And that's not too bad. Um, before I hung any sort of heavy weight off this tripod, I would want to take a shovel and dig the ends of the spars into the ground a little bit, and or I would also want to um, lash some braces across the bottom. Because if you put a lot of weight on here, this leg could kick out and the tripod could collapse. Um, what I just showed you here works pretty well for a tripod up to about um, you know 15 feet in height. Obviously for a 15 foot tripod you would need a few more people to help you stand it up, but the basic process is the same. Um, if you're dealing with a very, very tall tripod, say um, the spars you're working with to make it are more than 15 feet high, you know 15 foot, 16 foot, 20 foot, um, that's about as high as I've ever gone you know, with a tripod. Trying to stand it up the way I just showed you is um, a lot more difficult. It gets very top heavy, you need a lot of people, um, they're all underneath it, and obviously that could be a dangerous situation. So there is another way you can tie the tripod lashing when you have um, very, very tall or very, very heavy spars where you wanna take a little bit of extra care in standing it up. And I've got it prepared over here, so let me grab it. Bring it over. As an example here, I have another tripod lashing. I tied it pretty much the same way that I tied the last one. I started with the clove hitch. I did the wrappings like a figure eight. I frapped it. I tied off um, by making half hitches at the end. Um, there are two things I did different. The first thing I did different is pretty obvious. It has to do with how I um, laid out the spars here. I have two going one way and I have one going the other way. I have two butt ends down here. I have one butt end over here. Um, the other thing that I did differently is I almost always make a lashing as tight as I can. A tighter lashing is a better lashing 99% uh, of the time. Um, this is the 1% of the time where you have to make the lashing a bit loose. You leave the lashing loose and then what you do is you get a number of people at the butt of each one of these, um, one of these spars to make the tripod and you have them all push in together. The tripod comes up and you can spread out these legs, get them all adjusted. There we go. And now you have a good tripod and you didn't have to deal with it being quite so top heavy. Um, it's a safer way to go. The problem is, is because you're twisting this lashing so much when you stand it up, um, the lashing itself is a bit weaker. You know, so you have to take that into account depending on what you're gonna do. Um, that is how I tie the tripod lashing. Um, one way for 95% of the time, one way for the really big ones. Um, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs>